Manifest With Me, May 2021 Monthly Business Planning and Goal Setting. See how I plan my business manifestations each month. You can also plan your own business success next month with me at the same time as we go through this process together. Every month I take an hour or two to plan my business success manifestations for the following month. This time is well worth the investment as I always say there is no point in working until you know what you're working towards. Planning my manifestations is my secret weapon when it comes to rapidly growing my business every month. All planning is, is just making a decision. It's simply just deciding what you want. Manifestation always starts with deciding what you want. And if you don't decide what you want, things will never improve for you. Here's what I always say about planning. When you plan successful actions, you action your plan and become successful. The more detailed your plan, the more committed you feel. The more committed you feel, the more you will achieve. So I would like to encourage you to take some time to go through my manifestation planning process with me now and make success a priority in your business. So I would, I'm going to ask you to pause the content after each question that I ask you and write down your answers in a journal and we will go through this together and I'll share my own answers with you as we go along. My name is Kath Kyle and I lead the Hustle Less Manifest More movement. I help creators, change makers and open-minded business owners manifest business success through spirituality, self-belief and strategy and I help you master your marketing, manifestation and money mindset and I would love to know what you are planning to manifest next month so share your plans with me. You can let me know by leaving me a comment on my blog, YouTube channel or sending me a DM on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle. So here is my monthly stamp planning overview. I call my process my monthly stamp planning process because my goal setting framework is called stamp and this planning process is something that I share in detail in my book Stamp Goals and you can get my complete monthly stamp planning checklist and workbook as part of the book bonus bundle when you buy a copy of Stamp Goals book. But don't worry if you don't have my book yet, you will still be able to use the following process that I'm about to share with you to plan your own business with me next month right now. So there are 10 sections to my monthly stamp planning process and you can get all of the details, all of the full instructions and explanations as to these 10 points in the blog post which is linked to this content. So you could actually read the blog post at the same time as you are listening to me describing it if you like because that will give you a bit more detail because um, I'm not going to describe the process in detail every single month. If you want to go back to the very first time that I did this, you can go back to October, November and December 2020 and I did go through the entire process but I'm not going to go into a a detailed explanation every single time because those people who are doing the planning process with me every single month will get bored of me hearing the same explanations over and over again. So let's I'll give you a very quick explanation but not a very detailed one. So let's get started with number one which is ask questions ASK stands for ask supernatural knowledge and basically it helps us to tap into divine infinite intelligence by asking God or the universe some questions and here are some questions that I suggest you ask but basically you can ask anything you want so here are some examples what did your future self do what did you create what did you promote and how much did you make to achieve your goals. So basically, what did you do? What did you think next month that helped you achieve your goals? So God or the universe knows exactly what is going to happen next month and what you need to do to get there. So you're tapping into that divine knowledge and asking basically, how do I do it? So you don't need to worry about the hows because that is asking the question, how do I actually do it? Pause now, do your own planning and then let's go on to number two, set gratitude goals. 
So here's where we set our gratitude goals, which are things that we don't have control over that we can be grateful for, such as revenue and income. So what you need to do is decide how much money you want your business to make next month. And there are various different ways that I break this down, but basically a simple way to do it is just to think, what do I want to manifest in my business? What revenue do I want to manifest next month? And just simply write that down. And I personally don't share my exact monthly revenue goals because these are goals that I like to keep personal, but I will share my mammoth goals, my long-term goals, um, which are like five-year goals, 10-year goals, because I don't feel like that puts too much pressure on me. So um, my gratitude goal for the next year is to get Kath Kyle to a revenue of six figures, and then I intend to take it all the way up to several million per year within about five years and I do feel really comfortable with these goals because I already feel like I am working at that level and I am convinced that it will happen and it doesn't scare me so I am um, 100% sure that this is going to happen. So there's various different things that you can do with your revenue goals so you can go and have a look at the content if you want to delve deeper into that such as setting your profit levels and allocating your business money to different different areas. So I like to decide exactly what I want the money for and what I'm going to spend it on because that's very important because if you don't have a reason for manifesting the money then why would you manifest the money? So um, I give you some hints and tips in that blog post about different ways that you can allocate the money that you want to manifest. Then after that, you need to decide how much income do you want to manifest next month? And just to point out that income is completely different from business revenue. Income is what comes into your household, you as a person, and your business, it's what revenue comes into your business. And even though, though you might be just self-employed and you might not have a company set up, it's still, the, it belongs to the business, the money, and you need to keep it separate for tax reasons and to be able to see how much you're spending on the business and keep it everything very separate. That's what I recommend, otherwise it gets really messy. So um, the business needs resources to function as a business so that needs to be kept separate and then the money that you bring into your personal household also needs to be kept separate from the business so you can manifest money that doesn't come from the business money can come from a variety of different things so why not just manifest the money that you want and don't put pressure on your business to have to earn that money because um you know money can come from anywhere even if you've just started your business, you still need money to live, to pay your bills and everything. So you do need to manifest some money for your personal household. So how much do you want to, to manifest personally? Write that down and also write down where you are going to spend that money. What do you want to use it for? Do you want to save it, spend it, invest it? And I also have a 40% income allocation rule that I walk you through as suggestions on what you can do with your personal money when it comes in to your account. So you can go and check that out in the blog post as well. So pause there and then let's move on to number three, set giving goals. So giving goals are basically what you do, what you create in your business in return for money. So what are you offering in your business? What are you selling? So the question is, what do you want to create next month? How can you help your customers in the best way? And who are you creating this for? So my own giving goal is to create the second bonus for my signature course that helps business owners manifest business success. And this bonus is going to be so good that it is a fantastic mini course in its own right. And I know this mini course will be what people want as I see so many people buying signature courses on this topic. So my mini course will be jam packed, full of value and at a fraction of the price of most people's courses on the same subject. And to give you a sneak peek, my mini course is all on the subject of launches, which I am so excited about. And the reason I want to do the bonuses before I finish the whole course, and this is another tip for you and how you can make money without creating a massive course and just waiting. 
So the reason why I want to do the bonuses first is because then I can sell the bonuses separately as mini courses before my signature course is actually ready. So this helps me to create lower ticket price items and more demand for my course because I'm going to give coupon codes for money off the main course for those who buy my bonuses. So it's a good time to brainstorm some names for new products right now too. So if you are creating new products at the moment, brainstorm some names for them and decide what you want to focus on creating next month. And if you already have created all of the offers that you want for your business right now, a good giving goal to set would be to improve the products or services that you already offer. So try and get some feedback and learn how you could take your offer to the next level. And um, alongside that, I'm also going to create two content pieces every week as normal, which are just, I see them as tasters, little taste testers of bite-sized pieces of my paid products so that people can test out my content and see if I'm a good fit for them, see if they want to buy my actual main course. So that's how I see my content. So pause here and then let's move on to number four, which is to set growing goals. So growing goals are focused on how we feel and think about ourselves and our businesses. So you should set growing goals that focus on removing um, disbelief or limiting beliefs that are keeping you stuck. And then um, you should also set growing goals that help you step into a more successful version of yourself. And I'm going to walk you through this process right now and share my own answers to all of my questions right now so you can see how this works. So the first question is, what is holding you back from success? Why don't you have what it takes to succeed? So this is my answer. This month, I am feeling a lack of energy. So I actually did, this is not this current month, but it was the month previously because I do all of my content in advance. So this is what I wrote. This month, I'm feeling a lack of energy. I am usually a very energetic person, but right now I'm feeling a bit drained and I haven't been sleeping all that well. And I feel like if I don't have enough energy, then my audience will sense it and they won't buy from me and my business won't increase. So the next question is, what are the effects of thinking this way? My answer is, the effects of thinking this way is that I will start to see myself as someone who is exhausted, is dragging themselves through the day, and that will be the image that is portrayed to my audience, and they will sense that, and they won't want to work with me. Next question, are there any advantages of thinking this way? And my answer is, the advantages of seeing myself as a tired person is that I can justify and make excuses why I'm too tired to do things that are scary for me, like doing live streams or live coaching calls with my clients. And then I have an excuse not to step into my true nature. Next question, what are the disadvantages of thinking this way? My answer is, the disadvantages of not being my true self is that people might struggle to connect with me and trust me and therefore might be less likely to consume my content and therefore transform their own lives. Next question, is this disbelief true? What proof do you have either way? My answer is, although it is true that I have been exhausted this month, it is not true that this is the state that I need to stay in forevermore. It's not true that one month of tiredness is going to be a permanent thing and bring down my whole business. I have perfectly good reasons why I would be more tired than normal this month. One, we are just about to move house, which is, if you've ever moved house, you know how stressful and exhausting it is. On top of that, I've also had two very close family members in hospital having very serious and worrying surgeries and um, one of them was in hospital repeatedly and was still in hospital at the time that I wrote this planning session that I did this planning session and another reason is that I have been homeschooling the kids at the same time as running my business so um, both which require a lot of my energy 
Another reason is that we are in the in the UK and specifically in Wales, a country within the UK, is that we are still in lockdown and we've been in lockdown for about a year. We've been in lockdown or had some kind of severe restrictions for about one year. Most of that time my kids have not been in school, they've been at home. Um, my husband's been working from home. I'm used to working from home. I'm fine, but my three other family members that live with me are not are not used to being stuck at home all the time, and they don't like it, and it is taking their toll on them. So that is is tiring for everybody when you know people are not able to to be their happy selves and do things that that they enjoy. Um, another reason is that um, lately because it's coming to the end of winter, I have been craving a lot more raw food and I've not been giving my body what it's been asking for because we've just been so busy and um, I just didn't want to spend the time to plan something different to eat. Another reason why I feel like I've been more tired than normal is that our rental house is on a very loud and busy road and because we live at the seaside, there are people like boy racers always going by with these souped up cars with the windows down even in winter with the music blasting and the stereos with the big bass ba uh, blasting out and so they've got constant loud music pumping out from the car, car stereos and we live right on the on the main road which is very very close to the beach so this is the road that everybody has to drive down to get to the beach which is very very close and also this is a, a haven for bikers so there's always motorbikes and mo mopeds constantly revving their engines and they're very very loud and they're they're doing this all the way through the night they they don't seem to need to sleep maybe they've not got jobs to go to and they're just um doing it all the time plus we live right next to a supermarket um probably the busiest supermarket in the town so not only do we get all the beach traffic we also get all of the supermarket traffic going to there as well so basically the whole town's uh, traffic is driving right past our house constantly 24 7 and um, my sleep has been a lot more disturbed for the last year that we've been living here as a result so um so that's another reason why i'm more tired than i am normally but thankfully we are just about to move to a nice quiet area right next to the water right next to the beautiful water and the sea and and it's in a lovely quiet area it's not on a main road there's row, row upon road of very small roads behind the busy road and um, we also live right next to a promenade a pedestrian walkway which is only for people to walk on and it's not for cars at all so that is fantastic and um, when we move there my family members will um, who have been in hospital will be able to not not dependent on us moving house but um but in the future my family members will recover and heal my kids are just about to go back to school thankfully and it's all happening at the same time on the day that we get the the removal men coming in the the kids actually start back on school so it's all a bit crazy right now and um so they'll they'll get that and we'll get a bit more more time at home um i won't have to do homeschooling anymore which is fantastic and we are gradually easing out of lockdown as a country so um, I think today we're going to have new announcements like right now we're in the severest lockdown we're not allowed to we can't travel not allowed to travel can't go anywhere can't drive anywhere can't meet anybody from another household can't um, are only allowed out of the house for exercise um, all of the essential shops are closed the only place that you can go is the supermarket which is like right next to our house so everyone's coming here they can't go anywhere else um, and even in the supermarket, they they barricaded off what they call the non-essential items in in Wales, uh, in the country that I live in. Um, they've actually put put tape across <laughs> all of the items that, which is non-essential, which is absolutely crazy, um, including children's clothing. So I, I don't know why they don't think cl children's clothing is essential because children grow, so <laughs> it is essential. Um, lots of things that they've barricaded off like books we're not allowed to buy books I mean this is pretty severe what you know what is the world coming to when you can't buy books I mean it's not like everyone's going to the shop anyway so why can't they just grab them at the same time but anyway that's how it is 
So it's very, very severe lockdown in this country. And um, we're getting a, an, an announcement today to say that I think something might be easing. I think they they might be saying that you, you're now allowed to sit on a bench and um, have a cup of coffee out of the house. So <laughs> that might be the extent of the... Um, of the easing of the restrictions, but um, thankfully um, it will it will get better in time because they are rolling out a massive vaccination program. So I'm very very thankful for that. I actually got my letter through for my vaccination, and it told me that um, my vaccination is on the day I move house. So <laughs> yeah, when I say it's all happening, it's definitely all seems to be happening right now. But I've, I've rescheduled that. So um, yeah, so we we're all being vaccinated, and thankfully we're all coming out. So got so much to look forward to it's all going to get easier and better in the future and it can only go up from here so um it's also going to get more uh, easier for me to eat raw food in the springtime and the summer and i generally get a lot more fresh air in the spring and summer and feel more energetic so i do expect to feel a lot more energized in the future so um it's not true that my business is going to go downhill because i've been exhausted lately um, this is definitely a temporary thing and to be honest until I sat down and did this exercise I I was convinced that there was something wrong with me you know it's sometimes you can fool yourself and think oh that you know my, my health is going downhill what's wrong with me have I got a disease have I got COVID you know all these kind of things might be going through your mind but if you sit down and go through this process and you know is this actually true that this is a long-term thing a thing's getting worse and worse or are there very logical reasons why this might have happened and then I realized of course it's just a temporary thing of course it is this is not going to get worse and I've got so much to look forward to so this was such a useful process for me to go through <laughs> so I've uh, you know I no longer feel like that is holding me back and also it is not true that my business wouldn't increase just because I feel more tired than normal. Because um, when I remember back to a, a time in the past where I actually was suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome, which was dreadful um, lack of energy, my business was actually booming at the time. So um, it's that's not true at all. So I I actually don't believe that your audience picks up on your levels of sleepiness but I do believe that they pick up on your levels of passion and purpose when it comes to your business. So that's my own belief is that you could be um, suffering from something, but as long as you're still passionate about your business, then it's going to be fine. So the next step after that is to let go of your disbelief. So can you release your disbelief now? So what I like to do is to stamp out my disbelief by writing it down on a piece of paper and putting it in my stamp box, which is a box that I created specifically for this purpose. And then I mentally um, and physically release it and let it go. So then the next question is, how did you feel as you rejected your disbelief and overcame your fears? And I felt, it, I feel excited for the future now. So next question, how did you act next month to achieve this success? My answer is, I am going to relax and enjoy my new house. Take some time off work, sit and look out across the water and the beautiful view and feel grateful that this hard time in my life is coming to an end. Next question, what did you think, believe and feel next month? And these are the brain stamps that we are going to use in a minute. So my brain stamps are... I am a high earner regardless of my energy levels. My audience senses my passion for helping them to succeed no matter how many hours of sleep I've had. And I am worthy of taking a rest when I need it. Next question, what growing goals are you focusing on next month? My growing goal is releasing fear over my levels of energy. Now you can pause this if you need to well, you answer the questions and then we'll carry on and move on to number five, which is to write new brain stamps. So now what you're going to do is take the brain stamps that you've already written as part of overcoming your challenges and then program them into your phone as reminders or write them on post-it notes and stick them around your house. And this helps you to keep these positive beliefs at the forefront of your mind and reprogram your subconscious mind. 
So pausing there while you do that, and then let's move on to number six, plan promotions and launches. So now you're going to plan how you are going to make money next month. And this is very important. There is no point in setting gratitude goals about how much money you're going to make if you don't take the action towards making money by actually offering something for sale. So what are you going to offer for sale the next month? And even if you don't have a product to sell yet, you can always offer your expertise and knowledge in the form of con coaching or consulting. So there is a way to make money. Next month, I am going to be promoting my brand new product called my Business Manifestation Toolkit. So bear in mind that because I plan my content one month in advance, you have already been seeing promotions for my Business Manifestation Toolkit this month, and it's actually for sale right now as you listen to this. But I'm just taking you through my planning process when I actually planned this in advance. Next question, what was your offer priced at? And choose a price that fits your current confidence levels. How confident are you that you can get results? And if you're not confident at all, it's probably because you've never sold your offer before. So your price point should be zero and you need to start off by finding beta testers who can use your offer and give you some testimonials. Now, I did price my offer in advance and you can find out the, pr the price of it by clicking on the link surrounding this content and looking at the business manifestation toolkit, but I'm not going to mention it in this content piece because my prices will be constantly increasing. And when people come and listen to this content in the future, they will want it at the lower price and it will no longer be priced at that lower price. So that's why I'm not mentioning my prices in my recordings. Next question, who did you sell your offer to? I am selling my offer to soul led entrepreneurs and those people who have a purpose to transform lives, who are open minded and in agreement that mindset is the key to business success. Next question, where are these people hanging out? And these are the marketing channels that you need to focus on. Marketing channels are places like YouTube, Google search, paid Facebook ads, Instagram, etc, etc. So I focus a lot of my attention right now on my blog podcast and email list. They are my favorite marketing channels, but I'm also experimenting a lot with Facebook ads at the moment. Next question, how often did you promote your offer and to which marketing channels? And I usually do a monthly launch for the product that I'm promoting, but I also do share free content and opt-in freebies that lead to my offer all month long. Next question, how many of your offers are you expecting to sell next month? So now what you can do is set the dates of your promotions next month and put them in your calendar. And I personally use Asana for my project management. So I add dates in there. So you can pause that and do that now. And then let's move on to number seven, writing our stamp statements. So now you're going to write a statement that you read every day to keep yourself on track with your goals. And I go into this in great detail, showing you exactly how to do this in my Stamp Goals book. But I will give you a couple of pointers here to get you started with this very brief stamp statement. So what you need to do is write a statement, including writing down how much money you expect to make, what, what you intend to create next month and how you intend to feel and who you intend to be next month in a statement. And then what you need to do is read this out loud every day to help to reprogram your subconscious mind to achieve your goals. And I do share my own examples of this in my book and give you a template in my stamp workbook. That is one of the book bonus bundles, but um, you can just create your own with what I've shared with you there. So you can pause that and write your stamp statement. And then let's move on to number eight, which is creating a stamp plan. And this is where you actually focus on achieving what you intend to achieve. You are going to make a specific plan for taking all actions necessary to achieve your goals. So here are just a couple of quick pointers. I like to encourage everybody. And also this is what I like to do myself is to first of all, schedule your fun because it's not a dream business if you're not having any fun in your life. So, the dream business comes from it fitting around your desired lifestyle. So that is what I encourage everyone to do first is schedule their fun. 
so I always, every day without fail, even during this busy time of moving house, I have been going out for either a walk or a run every every day by myself and I also do a little bit of reading every day without fail and I, um, in normal times I do a lot more fun things than this but these are the bare minimum that I make sure I do every single day and these keep me sane and keep me happy. <laughs> Next you're going to schedule your accountability. So who is going to hold you accountable for your actions? like your coaching, your accountability partner, your mastermind group, etc. And I personally am taking a break from anybody holding me accountable until I've moved house. And to be honest, I'm pretty good at holding myself accountable anyway. Next, you're going to schedule your success rituals. Success rituals are groups of tasks that you perform repeatedly that help to work towards your goals such as your morning routine your evening routine creating your content holding your client calls etc etc so you're going to schedule those repeated tasks that lead towards your goals next you're going to brainstorm some tons tasks and tons tasks are things that you tend to just do once and then it's ticked off and then it's done such as like creating an about me page for a website usually that's it's only done once and then once it's done it's done so that's the next task that you need to do and then you're going to time stamp your stamp six so a time stamp means to add your success ritual or your tons task to a particular slot in your week and a stamp six means that there are six essential tasks that you need to focus on during any time period are. and these are these stamp six are number one gratitude goals success rituals number two gratitude goals tons tasks number three giving goals success rituals number four giving goals tons tasks number five growing goals success rituals and number six growing goals tons tasks and i give you examples of all of these in the blog post so go and have a look at that so those are your stamp six and you need to schedule those on a regular basis and a lot of these will be done every single day by you or by a team member but growing goals can only be carried out by you so you can delegate a lot of your gratitude goals and your giving goals to other people if you want to but growing goals is all about you as a person so that's why it's crucial to have some time in your day that's focusing on your own personal development. So you can pause this now and then answer those questions and schedule all that in. Let's move on to number nine, which is perform monthly manifestation rituals. And this is my most fun part of the planning section because I just adore all of the magic that comes with manifestation. So now you are going to perform your favorite manifestation rituals to bring success to you next month. And you can also use this time to plan a new manifestation ritual that you will start using during your morning or evening routines. I personally do a lot of manifestation rituals and a lot of them take place during my morning or evening routines. And things that I do, just a few examples of things that I do during this time are starting a new abundance log and completing that daily, writing new manifestation lists, on a daily basis and a monthly basis, scripting each day and also scripting each month. And if you want to find out all of the manifestation tools that I currently use to manifest success into my business, then I encourage you to go and check out my business manifestation toolkit where I have walked you through my entire process to help you manifest business success. And you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash manifestation toolkit. You can pause there and do your manifestation rituals. And now let's move on to number 10, which is to create new future overviews. Now what we're going to do is plan an overview of our perfect day, week, month and year. And this may take longer the first time you do it, but you don't need to keep redoing this every single month. You might just want to make a couple of tweaks on a monthly basis. So what you're going to do is create an outline of how you will use your time each day, week, month and year. 
And now you can use these perfect time outlines to create an actual overview of your next week and month. And as part of my book bonuses bundle, I give you the perfect time outlines to help you plan your ideal week, month and year. And then you use the stamp overviews to plan your actual week, month and year. And I share all of my own timestamps and perfect day outlines as examples in my book. But this is constantly changing depending on whether the kids are in school or out of school due to lockdown. So generally, I stick to the following perfect day outline. Six o'clock, I do my morning routine. At seven o'clock until nine, I do kids stuff, household stuff, take the kids to school. At nine o'clock, I do a workout, a walk, a run, some exercise and have a bath. At 10 o'clock, I help my coaching clients and answer questions in my members group and reply to my emails. At 11 o'clock until two o'clock, I do my business work, my success rituals during this time. At two o'clock between two and four, I go and pick the kids up and I do household jobs and anything related to the kids. At about four o'clock, I either do some household jobs, some kitchen prep, or do some business admin or some catch up. At five o'clock, I make dinner and then we eat dinner. At 6.30, we do household chores, kids clubs, things like that. At around eight o'clock, I start my reading. I wind down and do some reading. At nine o'clock, I wind down and do my evening routine. And then 10 o'clock, I am sleeping. So also answer the following questions. What are you committing to next month? If you don't commit to anything, you won't be able to grow. So committing to your business is absolutely essential. This gives you the mindset of success. So here's what I'm committing to next month. Sharing two pieces of long form content each week in three different formats and sharing one new blog post, one new video and one new podcast every Monday and Friday each week and also moving house. So I've not got a lot of commitments in there because we are too busy moving house and we're taking time off work. So we have now planned our entire month. Congratulations. If you actually worked through this at the same time as me, hopefully you'll be feeling very organized, clear and confident about how you're going to achieve your goals next month. If you would like a numbered checklist and a workbook with all of these planning tasks on it, you can get that free as part of my book bonus bundle that I now give away to all customers of my stamp book. The price of the book is so low compared to the massive value that you get. So I urge you to go and grab my book before I raise the prices and this free bundle won't be available forever. At the moment, I'm massively incentivizing buying my book, but in the future, I will take a lot of these bonuses out of the book bonus bundle and sell them separately. So this is your chance to get this super offer for a tiny investment. One of the biggest secrets to my success is to set up regular routines that I call success rituals for performing manifestation techniques that I use to manifest massive business success. This planning session that we've just gone through is an example of one of my success rituals that helps me manifest constant success. A lot of people ask me how to set up success rituals for business manifestation that don't overwhelm them and don't take up too much of their time. So what I've done is created a business manifestation toolkit where I share all of the tools that you need for manifesting business success. And these easily slot into your current daily routines, your monthly routines and your working day. This easy to use toolkit includes all of the tools, techniques and routines that I use consistently to manifest success in my business. So you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash manifestation toolkit. And make sure you don't miss my next podcast episode by subscribing to my podcast, Manifest Business Success. And I'll also give you a reminder via email if you're on my email list. And you can opt into my email list and get any of my free gifts, such as my free Manifestation Milestones Board Pack. This pack helps you create both a vision board and an achievement board for your business to help you feel amazing about what you've achieved 
and manifest even more. And it, this printable pack will help you to recognize and celebrate all of the fantastic milestones and goals that you are already achieving in your business, which is so exciting. And I also have a full video showing you exactly what it looks like, how easy it is to make this. So you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash milestones. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.